We're live! Hello, everybody! It's the Wood County District Public Library Ukulele Club. And it's almost one o'clock, so we're just about ready to get started. And in about ten seconds, that this will show up on the page I'm monitoring. Because we want to be super punctual. Because ukuleles are super Here punctual. It is. Session six live now. Ooh. Nice. Get full page. Hey, we do look better than last week. Are we not green? We're not green. We look nice. better than last week, and I think we look better than the week before also. There's <laughs> some contrast in the color. You know, by week 12, we're going to be movie stars. Yeah. Because ukuleles are super That's how right. it is. There we are. Okay. Here's the Ukulele Club theme song. A, two, three, four. Wood County District Public Library. That was me. <laughs> hey, everybody. You know how it you're starts with G a... and then goes to C. That's how it goes. You know how you're going to make a um, video about the theme song? Yeah. Maybe we should do that. We're going to we're gonna make a new... Hi, Allie? Hi, Allie. Wow, it's Allie. Yeah, so uh, pay no attention to what I just did there with the, <laughs> the, the D chord instead of the C. Um, yeah, we're going to make a new demo video of the theme song shortly. Um, Isn't live Facebook fun? And it's gonna be uh, <laughs> it's gonna be brief and concise and have all the right notes in it. We're professionals. <clears throat> Here we go. Two, three, again. Wood County District Public Library. Ukulele Club. C chord. C. It's the Wood County District Public Library. District Public Library's Ukulele Club. We are here to make music together as beginners and non-beginners of all ages, shapes, and sizes. One of the most important things about learning to make music is making music. There's links in the comments to our band website, grubsmusic.com, or there will be in a moment, and to the library website, wcdpl.org where you can find ebooks and audiobooks and recorded music and all kinds of things including uh, a link to get a temporary library card number if you need one to use all those resources that the library offers online and we're bringing it home playing the song. If you strum up, you end on the G, which is a nice note to end on in the key of G. And if you practice, you know, if you practice this, this is one of those little things that you can spend a little bit of time practicing, and it can make a huge difference in the long run in how expressively you can play. Um, I don't strum up very often. So I'm not very uh, I'm not very subtle about it, but if you just practice this a few times, you can emphasize that last note. It sounds so pretty today. You're playing flat. You're playing flat over there. Is that the one you're playing? Yeah, this is my travel tenor ukulele from Kala. Um, not that I'm advertising Kala ukuleles, but they're they're generally very good at very low prices, and this one in particular is fantastic because it's flat. Um, except the back is actually slightly rounded. 
and that's what gives it such a great big sound even though the the actual resonating box is pretty small but it's curved in that I don't know it just points lots of sound out through the hole and so you get you can play it really loud and it also has just a beautiful tone I love it and it comes from Hawaii it comes from California well we bought it in Hawaii oh we bought this one in Hawaii I forgot it did. Yeah, so it was manufactured in California and then shipped it to Hawaii. It met us in Hawaii. It and then we met it there and yeah. flew it back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, enough of that. You're going to help people get tuned I up. I am, and, and I'm so gonna... while, while Jace was playing so beautifully, I undid my strings. This is what a really badly untuned ukulele sounds like. And even still, it just sort of sounds kind of excited. It doesn't really sound all that bad. <laughs> so the string I left in place is the C string. I always get one reference pitch when I'm going to play with other people. When I'm playing by myself, I don't worry about it, but this is a real C. And so um, I showed you one way of tuning last time, and we're going to do a different one this time because you always need more than one way. So this is my reference pitch, and I want to tune this string. So I can either go and listen to that clashy sound and try to adjust it, which is a little bit tricky if you haven't done that before, or I'm going to take my fourth string here and I'm going to count over five frets. One, two, three, four, five. And those should be the same pitches an octave apart. And they sure aren't. They sound like terrible. And so I'm just going to adjust that down. I'm, just, I'm going to keep playing these strings together. Until I sort of like that sound. Twinkle, twinkle. Start. It's a fifth, right? I'm gonna count back up my five frets one, two, three, four, five, and see how I did. Oh, I did pretty good. Nice. Okay, now I'm, I want to tune this string, which should not sound like that. So I'm gonna count up four frets one, two, three, four on this third string, and these two inner strings now should match. And they sure don't. So I'm going to grab this. It's also, after a while, you um, sometimes you'll turn the wrong peg, and I will tell you that that still happens to me, and I've been playing um, stringed instruments for um, a million years, and I still sometimes twist on the wrong peg and think, why isn't this working? I sort of like that. Bum, bum, bum. Should make a nice, pretty C chord here. I'm going to check it by counting up four frets again on my third string. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's not quite there. You can hear it kind of jangling against itself. Making a little bit of a wah-wah noise. So I'm going to give him another, just a little twist there and do it again. One, two, three, four. That's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm going to give it one more little tiny twist. When, it, when you can't hear two strings anymore, you're good. The string difference. This sounds like maybe it could be one string. Almost. Okay, now I'm going to tune this A string. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put my finger on the second fret of my fourth string. And that should be the same pitch as the open first string. And it's not! So I'm going to give this a twist. I went too far. I'm gonna give it one more little twist. There we go. So if you if you've got flexible fingers and you want to try this just because it sounds cool, take your pinky and put it on the one, two, three, four, fifth fret of the second string, and that matches the first string. And then take your index finger and put it on the second fret of the fourth string. You get this three pitches, three strings, the same pitch. And then you put another finger on like the ninth fret of the, the third string. Yeah. Um, which, and w when you get good at this, you can play um, a song of our Christmas album. Thing to work, things to work toward. It's fun having the two strings alike. It, I don't know, I, just, I like the way it sounds. And I like the way, especially if you're playing arpeggios with your right hand, if you're going doo 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 doo. And you put. Let me just ring. It's so pretty. Everything you
you play on a ukulele is pretty. It sounds a little bit more like uh, a mandolin also when you've got the double notes in case in case you want that. If you're a recovering mandolinist. People tend to confuse ukuleles and mandolins in the first place, so if you really want to mess with people, play some double notes on your ukulele and make it sound just like a mandolin. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm all set with the uh, with the comments, and uh, Allie is out there saying hi. Hi, Allie. And oh, we got a couple of likes. Look at that. Mary Boone is here. Jeff Howes, Chris McDonald, Grace Lucas. Hello, everybody. Um, Are we coming out of hearing? Is that what's next? Did you did you plug Jeff's video? No, I didn't. Oh my gosh, the Jeff Howes who is um, who is who makes the grubs the grubs. We all make the grubs the grubs. <laughs> And Jeff House is the Jeff Housey part of the Grubs. Um, that's what I'm going to say about all of us from now on. Yeah. Um, Jeff so, House is the Jeff Housey part of the Grubs, and he's got part two of 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 learning of the, the Lodi, the Lodi um, video. Tutorial. tutorial. So it's as really you it, and in case you didn't catch it last week, go to uh, our band website GrubsMusic.com. It's in the comments. It's linked there in the comments. There's a lot of things there. There's some chord charts. Uh, that are relevant to things that we're talking about in these sessions and there's also video lessons from Jeff. Uh, so there's one from last week, part one of the Lodi tutorial and this week coming up soon will be part two of that. And there's going to be uh, a demo where we were just talking about working on a working on a little demonstration with all the right notes in it of the theme song in case you want a little more practice on the theme song for next time. Um, I guess we'll keep the theme song for a while until it's until permanent. The, okay, I guess we'll keep the theme song forever, like it or not. Um, and then there's also videos of uh, actually our whole band playing together, which is kind of cool. If you haven't uh, if you haven't seen that, I think we're cooler as a quartet even than two of us are as a duo. Um, so now we're coming out of here. Okay, so remember. Um, uh, we're not really going to play the whole song for you, but we're going to remind you of your part. So your part is this pretty little descending line where you're going to go on your first string, third fret, go boom, and then first string, first fret, boom, and then you're going to open that string all the way up, boom, but your hand is not going to fly open like this because it's got to be ready to put your ring finger down on the third fret of the second string. So you're going to play... Bum, 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 bum. And that's also a line you can sing. Or if you prefer, Or if you're a soprano, don't do it. <laughs> it's not that high, even. It's really not even that high. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so there is a um, there's a few basic instructions and a link to click on to upload your recordings when you finish them. If you want to be part of this collaborative recording pro pro project, we haven't really established a deadline yet, but we should. Oh, we're gonna! It's and gonna be fierce. Tune if you're late, you're in so much trouble. We should encourage you to, if you're interested, get started on that this week. Listen to the guide tracks and play along with them. It's just there's just a couple of tracks of me going one, two, three, four, and you can play along with them, sing along with them, and when you're ready, get another device with a microphone. Um, or if you're cool and you have multi-track stuff, whatever you can do it on one device. But you want to be listening to the guide track and recording your uh, voice and or your ukulele singing and playing along with it and then you send us that recording of you and we uh, and we mix it in with ours and it'll be a really cool thing when it's done in a you know, couple weeks. We're gonna hit the chorus here just in case this is somebody's first chance of hearing this.
will come out of here at some point. Come out of our basement. Um, when the virus makes the world, when, the, when we've conquered this doggone virus. Okay, so let's move on because okay. we, we have, we have All right, so other things to do. So here's a new thing for today. And if you've been checking out our website and looking at the uh, the PDF document that I've been uploading and and uh, and uh, updating occasionally, you might have seen this already. You might have seen the chord charts, uh, the diagrams for this already. So there's another pair of easy chords. Um, those of you who've been with us for a while will know that we're into easy chords, easy fingerings. Uh, situations where you can just move one finger on one string and play something that sounds nice. So we've got the that F and that C7. We've got this G6 and this D7. That's in the theme song. Okay, and the next one that I want to show you today is a little more complicated than those because it takes three fingers. But here's the good news. It's the same three fingers on the same hand for, for two for two different chords, and as yeah. you might and as you might guess from looking at your ukulele, it's only got four strings, which means if you're using three fingers, there's only one string that's left open in each case, and so here, whoop, we move it up. So start with your index finger on the first string, second fret and then just go up one string and one fret with each finger. So middle finger on the second string, third fret. So here's the first string, second fret, second string, third fret, and third string, fourth fret. So this can double as your uh, math credit for the day if you would like. And if you put those all together, it makes a B, a G, and an E, and then another G. This is an E minor chord. This is this is the first minor chord that we've really talked about in uh, Ukulele Club this year. Also, if if, it, if it's sounding like this, it probably means you've got it twisted and you're looking at it like that. Quit looking at your hands. Quit it. Quit looking at your hands. Feel with your hands. That's what your fingers are for. They're for feeling. So when the ukulele is up and down like this then your fingers are coming, your fingertips are coming at the frets of the ukulele, which is how they need to be. When your ukulele is tipped over like this, your fingers are lying down on the, on the strings and making them sound like that. And you get calluses on your braille reading fingers and you don't want that. Oh, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Okay, so the key here is to start on the second fret, which I forgot to do the first time. Start on the second fret and just make a diagonal line with this hand. I, I, in some ways, this would be easier in person probably than on video, but if you just make a diagonal line, that's probably the easiest way to describe this. Oh my gosh, hi Beth! Holy cow, long time no see. Wow, this is great. And Jeff is here too. Okay, so all the cool people are here now. <laughs> no, there's, no, actually, the, there's a couple of other cool people. Many of the cool people are here now, is what For I meant example, to say. For example, Ann Kidder isn't here yet. Ooh, that's right. Okay, <laughs> so you've got your E minor chord, right? Make, check and make sure it still sounds like this. If it doesn't, get your index finger on that second fret and then make a diagonal line across the first three strings. There you go. Okay, now just pick up that hand and move it over by one string. So I'm going back to E minor where I started now. The fourth string is open and my fingers are making a diagonal line across the other three. But then I move it over and the first string is left open and my fingers are making that same diagonal line across the second, third, and fourth strings. So you can switch back and forth between this and this. E minor, B7, and there's uh, a lot of simple minor key songs that you can play just with those two chords, but what's even better is that if you just take all your fingers off the fretboard, 
you get this chord, which is, as we've mentioned before, is sometimes called C6. If you think of C as the main note, this is a C6 chord. But if you think of A as the main chord, it's an A minor 7 chord. So now we've got E minor with this diagonal line starting on the first string. And then if we open it up, we've got A minor. And then if we put that E minor shape on the next set of strings, we have a B7. Now we have all three chords that we need to play almost any song in E minor, as long as it's in a minor key. So here's one that I like to play um, because I just find it really easy and I think it sounds great with a, 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 a strum. This is a called Oh Mary Don't You Weep, and it might sound familiar to you. So we'll start with the E minor, and alternate between E minor and B7 for a while, and then toward the end we bring in the A, a minor 7. So let's just play it once and show you how it's done. Two, three, four. Oh Mary don't you weep no more, B7. Oh Mary don't weep no more, A. Time to think about the chord changes, <laughs> and here you are. Okay, and here's a. Can you keep going with that? Here's a little magical cheat that you might be able to do. about a few weeks ago and the Hawaiian D7 chord. And the A minor 7 is already there. So the G6 is just second fret on the first and third strings. And it fits just fine with the E minor. And here it comes again, G6. The second chord in that song is a little spicier if you use the uh, the cheat that I'm describing here. So, so the nice thing about G6, this two finger G6 chord, which we've done before, second fret on the first string, second fret on the third string, uh, is it's also an E minor seven chord. It's got those those two chord names describe the same set of notes, so you can use it. While Sherry's playing the E minor, I can play the G6. And they sound pretty great together in a lot of contexts. Now when Sherry's playing the B7, and I switch here to this Hawaiian D7 chord, a couple of these notes sound really great with that chord. Because these notes are also in that chord. The C is not really in the B7 chord, um, but if you're playing jazz, you can call this a B7 flat 9. <laughs> it's an altered dominant chord, and it can sound pretty cool if used sparingly. You just gotta believe. That's all. This is 
one of the amazing things about the ukulele that I love the most is how easy it is to play complicated stuff. Stuff that seems complicated on paper is actually easy on the ukulele fretboard just because of the way the strings relate to each other. So um, adding, a, adding a flat 9 to your dominant chord is, uh, is easy to do on a ukulele. If you played this on a guitar, you would tie your fingers into terrible knots. Yeah. I know I've done it. <laughs> terrible knots. Um, do we want to do a little bit of melody picking with this song? I don't know what, what kind of time we have. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing great. It's 125. Okay. And we don't, we're not rushing to end by 130. Okay, cool. So, um, one of the fun things about, about, I've always wanted to teach partner ukulele classes because I think it's really fun if you can get one person to play one part and another person to play something else. And Jason talks a lot about playing um, different chords together that make everything sound even more complicated and beautiful. Um, what we do a lot in the band is some of us will be strumming and other will be picking, um, plucking a single string at a time. So with this, with, with Oh Mary, I'm going to just mostly be playing on this, thing up. Oh, how about if I only do it? I'll try really hard to okay. only do it. Um, only use this first string, and I'm going to hit this open string sometimes, and I'm going to hit it on the second fret sometimes, and sometimes the third string. I'm going to stick with those three notes, and just with those three notes, we can do really cool things. I'm not going to quite play the melody, oh, Mary, but um, it'll sound good anyway. So go ahead with Jason. A oh, one, two, three, four. on other strings I can also slide up and if I hit a wrong note I'm just gonna keep moving let's go one more time if I hit a note that I don't like I'm just gonna keep my finger moving up the string two three four the names of these notes up their neck. You just keep going until you find something that sounds pretty to you. And then uh, hang on to it. And um, if your friend will just keep playing the chords for you, you can switch off then. Uh, if you're nice, you can switch. Or, or maybe your friend will just keep playing the chords for you all day. Ha. Ha. We've talked uh, quite a bit about chords, and we've talked a little bit about individual pitches. Um, we haven't talked a lot about playing technique, um, and you'll get a little bit more of that from uh, from Jeff in his pre-recorded lesson videos. But one of the things that I was experiencing just now um, is that so these, this E minor and B7 chord are pretty easy to play. I mean, they take three fingers, but it's not a lot of movement to worry about. So with a little bit of practice, you can get this even as a beginner. Um, but in the context of playing a song, here's the funny thing that I noticed. The easiest chord in this song is the wide open one. I mean, the easiest one to remember how to play is this one that you don't have to put any fingers down for. But on the other hand, I have a lot more choices about how to play. I can let this one ring. I can let these notes ring out nice and long, or I can play them short. I have a couple of different ways to play them short. I can mute them with the palm of my 
right hand, or I can mute them. To some extent, I can mute these chords by just letting go a little bit with my left hand, letting, letting the pressure off with my left hand fingers. So I, I don't have all those options with the open chord because my left hand isn't on the fingers. Uh, my left hand isn't on the strings. So, uh, so I notice I can, it was easy to play these kind of fast and uh, uh, short and muted for, for a stylistic choice. But then when I got to the open chord, uh, it, was, it took me longer to shut that chord off because uh, I didn't have any left hand fingers to help. So one of the funny things that I saw uh, a couple weeks ago, not funny, one of the sort of surprisingly enlightening things that I saw a couple weeks ago was somebody playing instead of this easy version of a D7 chord, I think it was, it was this more complicated version of a D7 chord. And the specific reason that that person was choosing to play the chord that way was exactly so she could play it short, because this one with the open strings is harder to play short. So as you learn more and more ways of playing chords, you have access to more and more ways of playing the chords. Speaking of ways of playing the chords, we should play the other song with these chords in it. The bit like. <laughs> okay. The like, I mean, they, not that you don't like Will Mary, but you okay. like this one even more. So if you are, mm, if you're maybe a little bit older than me, you might remember this song from TV. I actually don't remember it from TV. I've heard cover versions more recently. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty timely. It's the Spider-Man theme song from the 1968, I think, cartoon series. And it uses these E minor. Well, if you play it in the key of E minor, it uses this E minor chord, this B7 chord, and this A minor 7 chord. And it's a basically a 12-bar blues progression, which you may remember from before, or you may be familiar with anyway, but it's all with these minor chords. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, E minor, does whatever a spider can, B7, spins a web, oh, no, 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 I did, I did it wrong again, here we go, we're going from one to four, we're going from E minor to A minor. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Now B7, look out, here comes a Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud, he's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes the Spider-Man. In the chill of the night. Oh, those words don't go here. No, no, no. So we're just vamping on E minor till we get to the third verse. Two, one, two, three. Spider Man, Spider Man, friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Wealth and fame he's ignored. Action is his reward. Look out, here comes the Spider Man. One more verse. Oh. Two, three, four. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Look out, here comes a Spider-Man. Here comes a Spider-Man. Big finish. Here comes a Spider-Man. Okay, I could have rehearsed that one a little bit more, ah. but... You get the idea. Fix it in the mix. Fix it in the mix. <laughs> Where's Eric? Where's Eric when we need him? <laughs> Eric, where are you? We need you. All right. I have been monitoring the comments. I don't see any uh, questions right now so far, but uh, we have a few more minutes. If anybody out there has any questions, uh, let us know in the comments. Do we play the theme song that closed now? Is that what we do? Um, I forget week to week. I think I think maybe we we plug Jeff again. We plug the website with the links on it, and then uh, and then off we go. If there aren't any more questions, okay. Yeah, do um do go to grubsmusic.com and um, check out Jeff House's instructional videos. They're very good. They're very good, and you get to see Jeff, which is a treat because 
we miss our get our Cause bandmates. It's, Cause it's just us. Yeah. Um, yes, and also on uh, our website, grubsmusic.com, there is a, a link that you can just click on to upload. Um, if you want, also, um, no pressure, but if you feel like uploading a picture of your ukulele, uh, or a picture of yourself playing your ukulele uh, along with um, your audio or video recording, feel free to do that, um, uh, of yourself playing the playing all of the coming out of your parts. Um, again, no pressure, but if you feel like it, um, please do. If you have any questions at all about any of this stuff, there's also our, uh, an email address on our website uh, where you can get, get to us with uh, questions after this session. Okay, so here comes the Ukulele Club <laughs> theme song, and uh, we'll see you next week. Two. A one, two, three, four. Wood County District Public Library. Ukulele Club. It's the Wood County District Public Library. Ukulele Club. Come on along and play your ukes with me. It's Ukulele Club. One more time. Wood County District Public Library. Ukulele Club. It's the Wood County District Public Library. Ukulele Club. Come on along and play your ukes with me. Ukulele. Thanks for coming, everybody. Be safe. Be good. Be safe. See ya. Oh, hi, Rebecca. Mm. See you next time.